The International Space Station, I mean, frankly, that was what attracted me to APRS to begin with. I had an HT, I built a tape measure Yagi antenna. I hadn't even walked out of the house when the space station was passing over and I was already receiving packets. I was blown away by it. That was it. I was convinced. Hey, I'm Jim, N4BFR, lead instructor at Ham Radio Prep, and I am here with... Jeff Hochberg, W4JEW. And Jeff, what is your ham radio specialty? Uh, well, I've been a ham since 2015 and um, was like immediately attracted to APRS. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's just been something that I've been focused on for, what, past nine years. Yep, APRS, let me make sure I get the acronym right. Automated Packet Reporting System? You got it, or okay. yeah, Automatic Packet Recording System, but it was also called Amateur Packet Reporting ser Service at one point, and okay. Bob, Bob would have accepted either. Yep, let's talk about Bob. Bob Berninga, WB4... APR. APR. Yep. Uh, is really the founder of APRS, right? And, and yep. what did he, tell us what that means. Yeah, so he created APRS back in 2002, um, member of the, well, he was in the U.S. Navy, but member of the U.S. Naval Academy. Um, he originally created it on the Apple II platform, and it was really meant originally for tracking ships based on the AX.25 protocol, and then ended up transitioning over into the ham radio world where it's been since. So from a technical perspective, perspective, it's a little stateless packet that goes out over your radio that has certain information in it, right? Correct, yeah, and it, the, the key uh, point about APRS is, is that it's a real-time protocol, right? right? So it's not store and forward like you find with WinLink. Uh, it's, you transmit a packet, and it's received immediately, and um, it, it's great for real-time data for anything from like location, positioning information, uh, weather, um, you know, there are a lot of bots available. You can get a list of repeaters in a region. Um, you know, there's really no limit to, you send SMS messages to people with cell phones and they can send messages back. Yep, so Bob became a silent key not too long ago, but his work is being continued by the APRS Foundation? Yeah, so originally about a year before, so Bob passed away in February 2022, um, about a year prior to his passing, he transferred the intellectual property, the trademark over to Tapper, the Tucson Amateur Packet Radio Group. But Tapper um, wants to see APRS be um, managed and governed by a different group. So evidently there were a number of people who were interested in taking on bits and pieces of APRS, but nobody who wanted to take on all of APRS. Mm -hmm. We made it very clear from the start that when we formed the foundation that the goal was to take on all of APRS and right. really, yeah, really become like a kind of like a, a, a solving like the, the aspects of like the legal aspects of it, the ownership of, of the APRS trademark. Okay. A lot of people, and, and this was a, a thing that we used to hear from Bob, automated packet reporting system versus automated position reporting system. Right, right, right? Yeah. Explain the difference. Of what they're, just, they're one and the same. Yeah, okay. they really are one and the same. In fact, if you go to www.aprs.org and you look at what Bob defines it as, he says both are acceptable. Okay, so aprs.org is the old website, but the foundation's starting something new on the web, aren't they? We, yeah, we are. So the original plan was to build a new version of www.aprs.org in parallel and then swing this, the name over. Um, but we decided that we're going to keep www.aprs.org in its current form, like a snapshot, and maintain it for historical archival oh, great. purposes. Great. Okay. We started how.aprs.works. Um, that's really going to be the new home for current modern information that helps hams get started with APRS from the very get-go all the way up to really advanced use cases. Terrific. Um, so where are some of the places I can find APRS today if I want to get, like I've got a radio that does APRS. Where, where am I going to be sending packets and doing things with? Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, APRS is very much intended for use purely over RF autonomous within the, like a geographic region. Um, but you know, there's tons of digipeters and eye gates around that let you exchange packets at a global scale. Um, you know, the best thing to do is to come to how.aprs.works, um, join the APRS group on, APR, on groups.io, and or the APRS group on Tapper's listserv. Okay. Um, and that's how you stay in touch with the, the probably the, you know, the, the, um, uh, the de facto, you know, members of the APRS community, and also where you can stay in touch with the foundation and what we're doing. 
You can also go to www.aprsfoundation.org. And, you know, again, how .aprs.works is really going to be your best source for technical information. Cool. So let me talk to you about three of the more fun things that I think about when I think about APRS. Yeah. Uh, first one is using it in MCOM events like uh, or public service events like a parade, right? Mm -hmm. so stick APRS at the end of the parade and track where it is, right? Yep. Uh, number two is I think about Space Station, right? Yes. You don't want to think about Space Station and APRS, but yes. that's a thing, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, MCOM, you know, uh, first of all, APRS is used very heavily in search and rescue operations where you kind of have like a central coordinating group. And then you have people out in the fields that are like working a grid system. Um, and again, the real time positioning aspect of it is of utmost importance. Um, the International Space Station, I mean, frankly, that was what attracted me to APRS to begin with. I had an HT, I built a tape measure Yagi antenna. I hadn't even walked out of the house when the space station was passing over and I was already Already receiving packets I was blown away by it that was it I was convinced and um, yeah I mean after that I it just I just was actually attracted got to it I got back to it again recently I did it a while ago I got back to it again recently and like not only did I send a packet, but now people are messaging me yes. back and forth yes. through it. Yes. And I'm like, that, that, that cool. was an amazing fun. The third thing I know is something really close to you is Golden Packet. Tell me what a Golden Packet is. Yeah, so the Appalachian Trail Golden Packet is an event that was started back in 2009 by Bob. Um, Bob had an idea for something called BearNet, and basically what BearNet was intended to be is a backbone network that ran the entire 2200 mile length of the Appalachian Trail and allowed other digipeters to link in, and if hams were out on the trail and they ended up in an emergency situation, they would be able to leverage APRS to get assistance. Okay. Um, the Golden Packet was designed to be kind of a proof of concept as to whether or not BearNet was feasible. So, um, you know, the idea of the event is, is that we have anywhere from 15 to 17 stations lined up the length of the trail. It takes place the third Saturday in July. Um, it's historically been like an all Kenwood event because they're kind of like the gold standard in terms of APRS support. But we've extended it. The guy who wrote Direwolf is part of the Golden Packet group oh, now, WB2OSC, John Langner. Um, he extended Direwolf to include functionality we need for the event. So now we can include people who don't own a Kenwood. Of, and, and frankly, Direwolf, we found, is better at decoding than Kenwood is. Direwolf is a great piece of software. Yes. I learned about it when I was trying to do my own Digipeter on a Raspberry Pi. And uh, I've... Oh, remember, you built you the now. one for your road trip, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I built... Um, uh, when I was trying... Uh, for one road trip, I wanted to be able to packet my APRS out, so I built a Raspberry Pi with a small transmitter that would allow it to get the stuff and just digipede it instead of using a, a regular radio as an experiment. It had a, a I put a, a, a cellular connection onto oh, yeah, that yeah. as well. So it could like do both in case I was I was out of uh, out of an APRS digipeter range. So that's a great that was idea. A, it was a lot of fun when I did that. Uh, so I see APRS everywhere. It's nice to know that somebody is is keeping track of that. Um, been on Springer Mountain, it, or not Springer Mountain, uh, on Clingman's Dome now with a new name uh, in uh, North Carolina when you all were doing a, a golden packet and watch the people set up their antennas and rigs and those kind of things so it's the the golden packet event is so super much fun. fun yeah so uh people should definitely look yeah one of that. these days would love to get like a west coast version of it like on the pacific coast trail that would be a lot of fun oh or a pch uh, pacific coast highway uh oh, golden yeah. packet yeah. like that would be fun too yeah. so good luck with that thank uh, you anything else we should know about aprs before we let you go um no just i mean you know we'd love the support of the the foundation you know there's five of us now but the foundation Foundation is not meant to be just us. It's meant to be the global APRS community. Um, membership is open to anyone who wants to become a member. It's 20 US dollars. You don't even need to be a ham to be a member of the foundation. Um, and yeah, I mean, we would love to have your support and um, definitely your contributions and anything that you can do to help us keep APRS moving forward. Terrific. Jeff, thank you. Good to talk thank to you Thank you today. so much. Yeah, great seeing you. 73. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.